Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's little episode is going to be just a little expansion of what I talked about in the last Reaper light triggering live performance type video that I did prior to this. So the important thing to know is that when you set up these lights, you want to set them up in a session that has just like the music or the triggering cues and stuff like that. And the reason being is because you want to you want to program your lights to the grid. And the reason why you want to do that is so that everything is perfectly in time with the song. Um, and when you actually run those songs in another session with all of your other material or whatever you choose to do with the set list or your DJ setup, uh, typically you don't have uh, a session that is tempo locked per song because you change things so much. So maybe you say one day I want to take this song and play it before that one or I want to move stuff around. And sometimes it's really not as easy to do that once you have things tempoed out throughout your session. So I like to do a completely tempo-less, gridless session when I do all of my live tracks, but I have to program these lights to the actual grid. And the reason why this is important is because the way that MIDI is, is understood on the computer is that MIDI goes along with whatever the grid is in your session. And uh, not all programs allow you to do this, but this is why, partially why I chose Reaper, is that you can tell the computer, the, the recording session, to ignore the tempo that is in the session and just use the tempo you apply to the MIDI. And I'll show you how to do that here. So in this little session, I did some, some fairly basic lighting work for about eight songs. And... I'll just use this last one as an example. Um, now what we do here is I'll do, I'll do like a, a MIDI track that's about the length of the song. And you can see these little blips in here are all the information of where I did stuff. I'll double click to show you. So I used a strobe light. I actually used four strobe lights, one on the outside, one on the inside, inside on the other side of the stage, and outside on the other side of the stage. and the speed of this light is uh, us all being controlled by the same one. And the way that I did that, uh, I'll have to see if, if it lines up right. This is from my last video, but what I did, you can ignore this, the four-way four dimmer. I have one light here, one light here, one here, and one here. And they're all two channels each. So one of them controls the speed, one of them controls the, the amount of strobing, um, whether it's uh, like lower to higher brightness. So what I did is I linked all of these together like that and made them, you know, I did this trick where you learn and I uh, press the speed so that all the speeds here are controlled. Oh, I guess right, I have to do it one at a time. So let me let me rephrase that. So in order to do this, properly I would have to do learn click the speed button 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 so that way I only need to use one note on the piano to control or one note on here since it's not a piano anymore one note in this spot will control all the speeds of that if I want them all to be controlled the same way and I do now I'll take the learn function again, just so that we can have these look the same. So when these get played, I'll mute the information here. You can see that it goes that way. And the way I have the speed up pretty high because most of the time on these strobes when it's up higher it flashes faster, but you can control that all however you want. Anyway, back to the main point at hand here is that <coughs> uh, this is what it looks like when you have a semi-finished piece of programming for the lights and the important part to be able to get it from here to this other session which I'll show you, which is the master session. This has all of their tracks and information. If I condense that down, you can see there's the lighting track here, 
same as the other one and it needs to basically fit right here now I'll show you what happens if you just move it over okay the nice thing about Reaper is that you can have multiple sessions open simultaneously and not have to activate or deactivate or load and unload and stuff so I'll click on this once um, I'm gonna click at the beginning copy it and then I want to put it right here so if I just drop it in anywhere make sure I have this selected let me undo that turn this off pretend that didn't happen so if I if I uh, click here notice how it's much longer when I paste it it's like way longer because here's why it's it thinks that the MIDI is going to the tempo of this song see the tempo of this song is 50 BPM I didn't program it to 50 BPM so what it's doing is it's essentially stretching the song or the information out further because it's syncing up to this tempo we don't want that so I'm gonna delete that we're gonna go back in here we want to right click we have two steps we have to do you want to right click and go to item properties or press F2 item time base has to change to time I don't even know how I figured this out when I did but I figured it out way back and this is exactly how you have to do it so you press OK make sure this is on time like we just did second step source properties ignore project tempo yes because we want to ignore whatever this project tempo is that we're moving it to this song's tempo is actually 130 so I'm gonna type in 130 because it says ignore project tempo and use this tempo so when I do that and press OK now this file is permanently saved to always exist no matter where you put it in 130 BPMs so what we're now gonna do is copy this and I know that this one starts the first light trigger cue on that first drum hit there so I'm gonna copy that file go over to my session and although it doesn't exist the same way because we're not using the song I can still use the click so I know that it's one two three four one two three four boom first hit so I'm gonna find that click right there right in the middle of it select the track I wanted to go to and then paste see that now it's perfectly in time it's the right length it's exactly what we need and everything will trigger exactly at the right time now we can double check and we can see I made my first mistake I forgot to compensate for the beginning of the track so now we're gonna take this just slide it back there we go now it's perfect okay so that's how you get it from one session to the next without losing the actual time information that it takes for one track to play in, in time with everything else I hope that's really helpful I really really wish that that was a video I could have found when I was doing all this so I really hope it helps and saves you a lot of headache so put it into practice and enjoy <laughs>